morning. How is everyone today? So, section two of our book page journal challenge. So, when I left you yesterday, I set about tearing up book pages into roughly inch squares. And then I used a sheet of standard white craft card it's just an a4 sheet and i decoupaged all my squares on and then i coated it with a mixture of pva and water roughly three parts pva to one part water and then i just added in <clears throat> one drip of the re-ink for my distress pad and what I ended up with was this creamy coffee coloured glue and that gave me the darker finish than if I'd have used the standard white. You can actually see here on the edge here, look this paper was white but using the tinted glue has stained that up and of course it's made it more robust and it, I wouldn't say necessarily waterproof but you know it's made it stronger so that's the beginnings of our cover I also move that a minute I also set about thinking about how I was going to use pages and I thought I could use coffee dyed pages um, as normal and then decorate with book page but I thought it might be nicer to actually go ahead and use book pages for the pages so therefore actually doing almost an alternative altered book so what I did was I took my book and I pulled out several pages I'll just pull out two for now and I took a dictionary page I haven't got any left oh well I took a dictionary page and I oh there's one I knew I had one I tore the dictionary page in half I then folded it in half glued it down and I then folded it in half again so this was actually like a quarter and then having that folded like that I then glued both sides in side yeah with the valley so there's the valley as it were these I glued and then I placed one page on that side and stuck it down and then I placed one page on that side stuck it down and then because my dictionary page was shorter than my book pages I then just tore off on this line with my tear ruler and what I ended up with was a double page spread obviously that had been given a stronger connection with this double dictionary page which I felt also added quite nice interest to the side of the page so I did that several times and collated them all together like the beginnings of the journal and then I started to plan my pages so I folded this one back ready to make a pocket I've left this one as is I folded this one over at the corner and stuck it all the way around to make a large pocket. I've left this one plain and then I folded one two to make this cascading line as it were and there'll be pockets. So that's part of that and then we're at the centre and then I went and did similar things at the back. So that will be, as it were, signature number two. But on the first signature, I did start to add some embellishments. 
So basically just a different book page here that had been coffee dyed, some lace, one of those ruffles that I showed you I did in the previous video. And then I put a giant pocket from the one that we made yesterday with the sewn fabric and the lace. And then this one is a pocket with another piece of that book. It's been coffee dyed. And then I just put some coordinating fabric on the back there and then I've put on this one which I also showed you yesterday and that's about as far as I got so I thought I'd come along with you today and we'd do the next page so I was thinking about the lunch bags that people often um, you know they have a gusset and they fold the gusset up and they make it into like a stuffed bag and I haven't got any lunch bags. I have made them in the past from brown paper and perhaps I'll do that with you another time. But I took just a basic, what we'd call A3, I believe, here in the UK. No, not A3. A3 is giant paper. I think this is a, a B3 envelope. Anyway, it's a standard business envelope. I glued down the flap and then I just folded up and strengthened the fold and I thought that was a pretty good mimic of how those lunch books look and then I've taken a piece of book page which I've just cut as a mat that will fit there and another piece that will fit there so let's get them glued into place and then we can seam the sides and make it into a bit of a pocket here I go, gluing on my table again. It's a good job hubby's not looking. I would be in trouble. There is trouble ahead. Claire, don't sing. You know you can't sing. Everybody will be going deaf and screaming at the bad tone. There you go. Let's stick that one down there. And this one on here. I'm beginning to think that this whole lockdown has sent me totally do lally. And I really need to get out and see someone. We're baking cakes that we don't know how to bake, which are a bit of a disaster. We are singing when we know we can't sing. We're working in jammers. It's all, it's all gone to pot. But anyway, there you go. The glue's falling over. And now I'm trying to record a video for you and my phone's tinging. It's all going wrong. Anyway, there we go. So I stick him down there like that. And we have instantly created a pocket, or we will have when the glue's stuck. Now, whilst that serves a great purpose, and yes, it's a good mimic of those lunch bags, I want to obviously decorate it up a bit. So, yesterday I stuck two book pages together. And I took my large, I think this is a three inch circle punch, and I cut out a lot of big circles. Now that's obviously, oh actually no, it could work. I was going to say it's too big, but then I think my inch and a half's too small. So I think we're going to go with the three inch. And now there's a phone ringing, it's all going wrong, I told you. Hey, that's life, what can you do? So I'm just going to ink this up round the edge. And we'll find some lace. I think it might be nice if we made like a crinkle yeah. that could go on there. So let's get some of our print stick. Okay. Oh, no problem. Okay. He's semi glued and then what we could do is we could use one of our smaller circles on top that might be quite nice or 
or we could use some of our fabric but this is all square so we're not happy with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of that yeah, same of paper that we had before um, which of course I can't find that's fairly typical isn't it <laughs> not a problem I'll pass the message on no worries at all um, I'm thinking. Oh, she is, isn't she? <laughs> I'm thinking the spot might Not be quite Thank nice, you. and it Who'd does it does work well with our colour scheme. Although I've got a bit of this darker one. See, the indecision is not very good, is it? I think I'm going to go for the darker one. I think it's going to stand out more. So. We'll give this a little rip because it's cotton and it'll give us a bit of a shaggy edge. And about there. You see, it's all chaos here, you can tell, can't you? And now I can hear a van outside and I'm like, is that going to be a delivery, going to be banging the door as well? So you've basically had a real insight to my life this morning. Deliveries, phone calls... Yes, yeah, see, I quite like that on there. So let's put a bit of glue on that. Because this is almost now like one of those toppers that um, Yvonne Preston was doing. I don't know if you remember or if you've seen them. She was doing pocket toppers a little while ago. Um, where she sort of took a, a circle or another shape and built it up with layers um, generally ending with a butterfly because this one does love butterflies those of you that watch her channel will be aware of how she loves a butterfly I'm oh, sorry I'm desperately looking for a bit of cheesecloth or something now which of course I can't find either can I so I'm wondering whether to go for one of these miniatures that was already made rather oh yeah look liking it liking that so <clears throat> I'm gonna glue that on there I don't know about where you are but it's actually cooled down a bit here I don't know if you can see I've actually got a woolly on today rather than more oh and now the dog's barking you see it's all happening it's all happening Go and join Claire for a world of craziness. There you go. Definitely not boring here, is it? <laughs> so I'm quite pleased with that. And then I keep asking myself, do I need to cover this? Because there is a lot of book page in here. But then, of course, that is the challenge. So, no. And what about this one? No. I think, especially as having scan read it, there's no real nasty words there or anything that should be covered up. I'm just going to go for this corner. So let's give him a good old glue up. Trusty print stick. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac around the edge to make sure that all the edges are down we don't want to puck his edge. Sorry, I don't know. For some reason today, I can't think and speak. And I'm going to bring it down slightly so it hangs off. Because obviously if it was over the top there and we we're in and out of the pocket, it's likely to get damaged. So I'm going to turn him over. We've got excess glue there, but that doesn't matter because... I'm going to bring in the journal that we started and I'm going to apply it to the page. So I need glue on it anyway. Now that's a fold, so we don't want it on that one. I think this one. So you see this will now sit here. If I drop it down a little bit, then the lace will flip out of the bottom. I'm just trying to decide whether to glue it completely across the back 
or just on the three sides that gives a, an extra pocket I'm going to go for three sides I think so moving it all up let's get our glue do you know these little bottles are brilliant because it allows you to be more precise than the actual Fabri-Tac bottle does however they are prone to getting clogged if anyone's got a better idea let me know I'd be very happy to hear right <clears throat> so let's work this back out where are we going I think we're going down over a little bit so we can see the text just about there Give it a good old press, make sure he's firmly down. And now we've created this lovely little pocket that resembles the lunch bag. It's got the pocket up here, the pocket here. We put our book page circle on the top there with our embellishments. And there's a little bit of lace that when the book's closed, comes out the bottom. And that adds to the the drop of the book but it's the same lace as the one up here so it all matches very happy with that so if that's that one we ought to think about some tags to go in it or some cards or whatever now one of the other things that I did while I was playing with all of this yesterday was I took a book page I was obviously cutting out these circles and then I just put a picture on the back and I just thought that was really quite nice it reminded me of the old um, like photograph albums and things that you would have so I thought I could ink up the edge of this one and then if I was to put some coffee dyed paper on the back A it will strengthen it up and make it a little bit more robust and B, what it will do is obviously it will give us writing space for on the back. Because especially there where that picture is, it's very, very flimsy. Because that's just copy paper with a printed photo. So pull out a piece of coffee dyed paper. Now, that's quite a pretty one actually. Look, it's one that I did through a stencil. Do we want to cover that up? Are you going to want to write on that? No, that'll be alright to write on. So, we glue him down. And I may even run this through the sewing machine as we've got this stitch scenario going on throughout the fabrics in this book. So, I've glued him down there, and I think what I'll do now is I've got another one that's more square rather than long and thin, but we'll do him as well. And that's given me two cards to include in my book. Now, i put this one right on the edge, so I've got a lot of choice now. I should have thought about that. And that'll have to be a long, thin card. But if I put this one further over, I can get a tag out of that. So, we'll put him, or her, there, over a bit more. And then, I, when that's dried up, I can set that into a tag. So this one becomes a cabinet card. Like that. And I can obviously just ink that again. We've got a bit of pattern and some writing paid part on the back there. And then this one I'm going to cut into a tag. So if I can find my tag template, which is here. And 
I'll line it up so that it's just above the hole. It's all go here today. Just above the hole. The hole is just above the piece that I stuck onto the paper. And I'll cut it across there. I've got a dog that doesn't like anybody. And the postman's at the front door delivering a parcel. So she's going mental. I do apologise. And now I'm going to chop that down short. I just wanted to check that it wasn't going to be too short. There we go. So that's the start of that tag. And then I think I can perhaps use some more of our brown paper, the, uh, brown fabric that we used before. And maybe some of our lace. No, the lace is nice. I like that lace. So let's chop a bit of this lace off. Just about there. And this is folded double, so I'm just going to cut him in half. I do like when I'm making a journal to have sort of three or four things that I use repeatedly. I think it adds to the uniformity of it. So I'm just going to ink it up before I stick that on there and get a nice ink pattern running. Around the edge. And then I'm going to add my lace on to the bottom. I'm not going to crinkle him up. I'm saying I'm not, look, and I'm doing it. Am I going to do that or not? Um, no, I'm going to use the same lace, but applied in a different way. So I think I'm going to line it right up to that book page area there. And I'm going to stick him down like that. And then I'm going to find one of my pre-made little pieces over here that I can put onto him. See, I quite like that there. So we'll put the book page ruffle on the bottom there. And then perhaps we'll try and find one of our numbers. Do you remember the numbers I was using? Uh, where did all our numbers go? They will be over here in this corner. And this is what happens when you've got a messy desk. Nothing really works. Because, oh, now I'm jogging you, aren't I? You've really had an adventure today. Goodness me. Ah, here's a nice little number 10. So, if I find my little tiny inch punch. Now, I did tell you yesterday, but anyone that wasn't here, um, these are a freebie from Tracy Fox, and she has very cleverly made sure that they are a perfect inch so they're easy to cut out because I don't know about you, but I definitely can't cut a circle. I get an oval or some weird shape, but not a circle. So thank you for that, Tracy. And then we're just going to put our number 10 on there. I'm going to put a little bit more glue under there because we can see that's moving around. Just under there. I'm always a little bit wary to add too much glue in the first place because what I don't want is the glue squelching out all over the place and making everything else a mess. I would always rather go back, as my grandma told me many, many times, you can always add, but you can't take away. So, there we go. So that looks Nice and firm. I'm pleased with that. It's a nice looking tag. I'm just trying to decide whether or not to put a, a little tab top on it or whether to leave it. 
I think it's the time being I'm going to leave it. So I might come back and change it. I do that a lot as well. So let's find our pocket that we made. And then let's just slip slip her. She's not quite sure because of the lice. But we're just going to slip her into our pocket. There. And there's another page done. Pleased with that. Have a great day. I will see you soon. And hopefully when I come back, it will be a little bit quieter and less happening. Take care. Bye.